In royal robes, I don't deserve. I live to serve your majesty. Good morning and a warm welcome to Christ Church for our service of morning worship. This is the final service in our summer series, Jesus, Our Jubilee. And today we'll be focusing on and celebrating Jesus as the King of Kings. The notices for this week and into September and beyond are on the email notice sheet. If you don't receive this and would like to, please contact the office. Printed copies are also available in the church. I would just like to bring to your notice that the rescheduled Macmillan Coffee Morning will be on Thursday the 1st of September at 10.30am. And now, we can just take a moment to prepare ourselves for worship, to concentrate on Jesus, the King of Kings. And so we come to our opening sentences. Please join with me in the words in bold. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, direct our thoughts. Teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we come to our time of confession, an opportunity to bring to God things that have gone wrong during the last week, and to ask his forgiveness, and then to ask his blessing on what we will be doing in the week ahead. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have failed you, as did our the first disciples. We ask for your mercy and your help. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another, that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We now have our Bible readings, which Les will bring to us, after which the Reverend Margaret Fowler will be speaking to us. The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and for ever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And also Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And the Gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 19, verses 36 to 38. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices 
for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, we just thank you so much for your word in the Bible. Lord, we thank you as we come to the end of our series, Jesus, our Jubilee. We thank you, Lord, for all that we have learned together. And Father God, we pray now that you will open our minds, you will open our hearts to receive you and what you want to say to us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as we come to um, the end of this series, it's been a great series, let's remind ourselves what Jesus, our Jubilee, has been all about and uh, perhaps what we have learned as well. If you were here on the first Sunday of this series, um, Sue Goldsmith was preaching and she reminded us how the year of Jubilee was announced. It was by the blowing of a ram's horn and Paul Shirley was um, in the um, music group and he kindly blew his trumpet for us, which is the nearest we can get to a ram's horn. The idea of the Jewish Jubilee year, which is a year of rest, can be a bit confusing because as well as the Jubilee year, which is every 50th year, every seven years there's a kind of mini Jubilee called a Sabbath year. And, these, and every seventh year, this Sabbath year, it's also a time of rest, just as the Jubilee year is. But this is intended as mainly a rest from agriculture. It means the land must not be sown or harvested, but it must be left to rest. I remember learning at school, perhaps you do too, about fields being left fallow, which is good farming practice and enables the land to recover. It's something that's being practised more today as farmers realise that there was good reason behind the old farming method of lying fallow. During the Jewish Sabbath year, that is a seventh year, everyone can go into the fields to gather any food which is growing wild. As I mentioned earlier, nothing could be sown and there were no crops harvested, so you just had to go and glean what there was in the fields. And we read about it <coughs> in Exodus 3. For six years you are to sow your fields and harvest your crops, but during the seventh year let the land lie unploughed and unused. Then the poor among our people may get food from it, and the wild animals may eat what they leave. Do the same with your vineyard and your olive grove. God also promised that if his people observed this seven-year Sabbath, he would provide for them until the next harvest, which wouldn't be until the ninth year. In an agricultural community, such as in biblical times, um, if you were to obey the Sabbath year, it would mean that you were totally trusting in God to supply your needs because you're not sowing or harvesting for any food. And that could seem quite scary. Today, obeying the Sabbath year applies only to the Jews living in Israel but it does provide some agricultural and economic um, challenges for them, even today. So that's the seven-year cycle of Sabbath years. And so we come to the year of Jubilee, which is the year after seven times seven Sabbath years, so the 50th year. Why do we have multiples of seven years? Well, the number seven is very special in the Bible. In fact, it appears more than 700 times, believe it or not. There are seven days in a week, and the seventh day is the Sabbath day, a day dedicated to rest and worship. 
And if you know the book of Revelation, you can't seem to escape the number seven in terms of seals and trumpets and so on. The number seven tends to represent something is being finished or complete. Hence, God's creation was completed on the seventh day. And so the number seven is said to represent divine um, perfection. The year of Jubilee is very different from the Sabbath years, the seven year cycles, because it has a much wider implication for rest and freedom. Jubilee was the major time of rest and recovery when people were released from their debts, slaves were set free and property was returned to whoever owned it. Can you imagine that if you were a slave or if you had a massive debt or if you'd rented out a property and you, you really wanted it back, you knew that in the year of Jubilee, everything would be reset. It would be returned to how it was originally and you were now free of all the years of anxiety and worry about your captivity, about your debt and about having your property returned to you. Jubilee was a year when the Israelites returned home to strengthen relationships with their loved ones. What a fantastic thing to do. Go and see all your relatives during the Jubilee year, restoring your friendships and relationships. Most importantly, though, the Jubilee year acknowledged that God owned everything and everything we have belongs to him. People rebuilt their strength during Jubilee because they didn't work and they strengthened their relationships with God and, of course, with each other. And it seems like a pretty good plan to me. During the year of Jubilee, though, the Israelites had to live by faith, trusting and obeying God. If you remember, trust and obey was the theme for the second week of our series. Two weeks ago, one of our mission partners, Verity Butt, was here and she told us a little about her work with Mercy Ships with Youth with a Mission, otherwise known as YWAM in Australia and Papua New Guinea. I had coffee with Verity this week and we discussed her finances. And Verity lives completely by faith. She doesn't earn any money working for YWAM. She relies completely on gifts and donations to pay her rent, to buy her food and her clothes. And she saves a little every month from what she's given so that she can come home to England once a year. The charity she works for do not even pay for a trip home, which most charities do. She only owns a few clothes and possessions and she just trusts God to supply all her needs. And as she has trusted him, he has been faithful to her. And God's faithfulness was the theme for week four of this series, faithfulness so unchanging. We looked at the faithfulness of King Hezekiah and we also looked at the faithfulness of our Queen who has faithfully fulfilled the promise she made at her coronation. O Christ our God, fill my heart always with the joy of faithful service. The theme for this week is King of Kings. The Lord promised King David in 2 Samuel 7 that he would raise up a king from David's line who would reign forever. David himself never saw the promise of this new king fulfilled, but he trusted in God's promise. If we look in Matthew 1, 6, we find that King David is listed in the genealogy of Jesus. The promise of God's king was 
fulfilled in Bethlehem, 1,000 years after the Lord made his promise to David. We heard again about the birth of a child foretold by Isaiah in Isaiah 9.6. We heard that this child would be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom for ever and ever. And this was 700 years before Jesus was born. And we also heard from our Bible readings from the uh, prophet Zechariah in Zechariah 9.9. And Zechariah also foretold the arrival of God's king. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Zechariah tells us that this king comes to bring us salvation. And what does the name of Jesus mean? One who saves, heals, rescues. Jesus is our salvation. If you remember, the angel told Joseph in a dream that he was to give Mary's son the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Zechariah's prophecy was given 500 years before Jesus rode into <coughs> Jerusalem on a donkey. And when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, the people of Jerusalem rejoiced and praised God in loud voices saying, Blessed is he, the king who comes in the name of the Lord. The people of Jerusalem recognised Jesus as their king on Palm Sunday. But by Good Friday, they had been persuaded otherwise by the Jewish religious leaders who were threatened at the very idea that Jesus might be God's king. I'm not sure if you are aware, but we are right now in the Jewish year of Jubilee. 2022 is the year 5782 in the Jewish calendar, and the 50th Jubilee year began on the 7th of September 2021, and it finishes on the 26th of September this year. So in just a few weeks time. So we are actually right now in a year of Jubilee. I'm not sure if any of us actually realised that when we started planning this series. So this is a spiritual and holy year for the Jewish people. And just as a reminder, it is the year when slaves are free to return to their communities, when people and animals rest from work, when agricultural land is rested, when property is returned to its rightful owner, and the whole year is dedicated to trusting and obeying the Lord. When Jesus went to the temple in Nazareth, we read about that in Luke 4, he read from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 61, 1-2. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, and set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Jesus then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. Then he said, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus was saying, I am Jesus, your jubilee. Your king is right here. But the people of Nazareth thought he was being arrogant and they drove him away. 
However, when you read the gospel stories, what did Jesus go on to do? He went to the poor, the sick, the lame, to those shunned by society, and he healed them, setting them free to start a jubilee life all over again. This is a picture of how Jesus, God's King, sets free the imprisoned and enslaved and lets them go home and start life all over again, to start life afresh. What a wonderful thing that is. And this is true for all of us today. Jesus has come to set us free, if only we will recognise him and not send him away. Jesus is our Jubilee King. And what's more, those who put their trust in Jesus are heirs of the King. Romans 8.17 tells us, Now if we are children of God, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Kings and their families and their heirs wear crowns and royal robes. The queen and her family wear royal robes and crowns on state occasions. In Isaiah 61, we can also read, For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. And in Psalm 8, we read, that all those who praise the Lord are crowned with honour and glory. Jesus, our Jubilee King, came to set us free from all that is past. And when we acknowledge our wrongdoing, he forgives us. We are free to go back home where we belong and live our lives with Jesus instead of living to please ourselves. As sons and daughters of King Jesus, we are each clothed with spiritual robes of righteousness and we wear on our heads a spiritual crown of glory and honour. Here's my robe. And here's my crown. In church today, we'll be making crowns like this and wearing them to remind us that we are sons and daughters of the King and we wear crowns of righteousness. As believers in Jesus, we can, day by day, receive his jubilee forgiveness. And when he returns on that final day of jubilee, we will reign with him, dressed in our robes of righteousness and casting our crowns before him forever and ever. Amen.
that stone was moved for good For the Lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in Thank you very much, Margaret, for your message to us this morning. We now have an opportunity to proclaim our faith in the God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. If you wish, please stand. So let us affirm our faith together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Liz will lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, you are King of kings, King of glory, and yet you laid aside your glory, your majesty, for us and promised that you will hear all who pray in faith. Help us to remember that prayer is powerful, not because of us, but because of you. And so we come, lifting our prayers, our thoughts, our hopes, and our fears to you here this morning. And so we can pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. First, we pray for our church, your church. We ask for your blessing on all our clergy and their families in all the churches in Billericay. And we ask that as termly activities begin again in our churches, that you will guide all those who prepare and those who lead and those who take part. Lord, we pray for the newly appointed Church of England Racial Justice Director, Reverend Guy Hewitt. Guide him in this new post as he leads the unit for racial justice. We pray for all situations where people are sidelined and persecuted for their ethnicity, their race, their beliefs. We pray for all who work to root out racism across our world and we ask that they are guided by your wisdom and your grace. Be with Christians in these situations, empower them with your grace and give them assurance of your love for them so that they can show love to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation. We pray for all young people who may be feeling anxious about what comes next, 
those wait, still waiting for results, those who have them but no further or higher education place yet, those whose decisions for next year have been made. Help us to value each and every young person and enable them to flourish and become who God wants them to be. And we pray for all children, pupils and students who are starting a new school, a new class, a new college, a new year group. Guide all those who teach and lead. Give them empathy with those who are apprehensive and help them to be role models for those in their care. And we pray again for the leadership election for a new Prime Minister to serve all the citizens of this country. We ask again for a healing of divisions and for honesty beyond party politics in genuinely seeking to work with others to address the enormous problems we have. We pray for all those who are fearful at the rising cost of living. And we ask that you, our generous God, will touch the hearts of those of us who have more than enough to live on, to show generosity to those of us who do not have enough to live on in whatever ways we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, your world. Father, thank you for the rain we've had this week, but across the world, fire, flood and drought are causing more damage and hardship, and we are no longer immune from that. Guide the nations of this world to work together for the future of this planet and how you intended us to live on it. Show us our part in that. And we lift to you again Ukraine, as it has just marked its 31st year of independence. Keep us faithful in praying for that country, for those still seeking refuge here or in other countries, for those returning, for those who've lost friends and family in the conflict and whose future is now uncertain. We pray too for Russian families who've lost family in the fighting and for those endangered because they speak out. We think of other areas of conflict and tension in the world too, and in a moment of quiet, lift them to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sad because someone they know has died or is ill. We pray for the family and friends of Olivia pratt Corbel as they mourn her death. And we pray for the people of Liverpool in their shock and grief as they seek to resolve the issues around deadly criminal rivalry. Guide all those who seek justice and peace in this. And Father, we lift to you now those who are ill, those who are bereaved. Surround them with an assurance of your love and your peace as we name them now before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for ourselves, we thank you again that Jesus is our Jubilee. Thank you for the reminders across this summer series that you see what is in our hearts that real worthwhile wisdom comes from you, that you are a faithful God. We thank you for reminders about people and situations that have helped us to stay faithful to you and for the words of truth and life that we find in your word. Help us to live more fully for you, finding joy in our relationship with you and spreading that joy to others. Merciful Father, accept these prayers in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, as Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, 
Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And finally, the collect for today's part of the summer series, King of Kings. Lord, you are our role model of reconciliation and forgiveness. You stretched out your hands in love, acceptance and healing. Help us to seek to respect and value people of all faiths and none, and to see the value of doing small things in love for everyone. Amen. Our final song of worship this morning is a real hymn of praise to the King of Kings. Crown him with many crowns. Cease 
It's been lovely to worship with you this morning. As we come to the end of our service, I would remind you that due to the bank holiday tomorrow, the church and the office will be open from Tuesday to Thursday in the mornings. If you do need anything, or you just want to chat, all the contact details you need will be on the screen at the end of the service. And so we have our closing prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light upon our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all people in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.